I left my cheating wife stranded at her hotel and then grill her for hours about her stolen car. This is the story of how I left my cheating wife stranded at the hotel she was cheating at and how I tormented her until to her eventual downfall. It all started on a seemingly ordinary day when I found a hotel key card hidden in my wife's purse. Listen, I was only looking for some chewing gum, and that is where she keeps it. The gum wasn't in the main pouch, so I went digging for it. I never get into her purse otherwise, anyway. It was a holiday and express key and I was certain we had never been there together. Immediately my heart began to race and I started trying my best to jog my memory to remember if we had ever stayed at a Holiday Inn before. I just couldn't remember. So instead of confronting her about it immediately, I decided to do some detective work and figure out what was going on. I figured if she was actually meeting someone at a hotel, then I would need to look for a pattern and determine if and when she could have been meeting her fair partner with patience and a little bit of luck, I managed to decipher a pattern. Now I may be wrong about some of these days, but there is always something that she has to do during the week that she doesn't tell me about ahead of time, like one day it might be that she has to go tan, and as it turns out the wait times were extended. And maybe that she also ran into some friends there and they talked for a long time in the waiting room afterwards. Etc. One time it was an impromptu coffee date with one of her girlfriends, another a sudden urge to go see your sister or her mother. I mean, when I do something, I plan for it and run it by her schedule to make sure she's good with it. Not that I am some little whooped puppy, but I find it to be a matter of common freaking courtesy to do so. So when she doesn't even care enough to check with me about any of this ever, it starts to affect things anyway. I told myself that I'd be prepared for the next one, and I was. I enlisted the help of my brother to execute my plan, which was designed to find out the truth and then teach my wife a lesson she'd never forget, if warranted. As I filled him in on the details, I could see the mixture of shock and amusement on his face. We both knew this was going to be one for the books. She said she was going to go shopping at the mall with some of her friends, and as always. I enabled her and said, sure, no problem at all. See how easy going I am. That's probably part of the problem anyway. I called my brother and he flew to my house. I grabbed the extra set of keys to her car, and then we drove to the Holiday Inn Express sure enough. There it was her car parked in the back of the lot. Imagine freaking that what an idiot I was absolutely devastated, but that devastation quickly turned into a fierce anger from the second. I stepped out of his car. I started to record the entire thing on my phone, narrating every step like a true crime documentary host. I even made sure to capture the hotel sign in the surrounding area in the background as proof, so I had my brother drive my car to his house, and I followed behind him in her car. I drove her car to my brother's place, parked it inside his garage, and then took my own car back home. My heart read with anticipation as I imagined her reaction when she would realize that her car was gone. I sent her a text asking how her day was going. She said they were having a great time. Oh, I'm sure they were. I didn't say anything else. Soon enough, her world would be falling apart. Hours later, she ended up having to get a ride home from her sister, who was completely unaware of the situation until this point. When she finally arrived, she told me that her car had been stolen from the mall, and I had to suppress a grin as I secretly recorded our conversation with my cell phone video camera. I decided to have some fun with her, so I started asking her questions about the supposed theft. The more she stumbled through her answers, the faster I fired off my questions. Why hadn't she called the cops who else was with her? At her girl day at the mall, I could see beads of sweat forming on her forehead as she struggled to maintain her composure. Then I insisted on calling those friends, but she made excuses as to why they couldn't help us. I told her that was crazy and that she needed to call them. Now she started to get up and leave the room, but I told her to stay and call them so I could hear and maybe help figure it all out. She started to leave anyway, but I insisted, so she sat down and stared at her phone frozen with fear. At this point, I could sense her growing desperation and I must admit it was thrilling. Finally, I said that I was going to call the police and she suddenly said that might be a bad idea. Her eyes darted around the room, as if searching for an escape. I told her we had to call the police, and then picked up my phone. So I called my brother who pretended to be a cop, and told him that the car was stolen from the mall. I assured the officer that my wife would be more than happy to provide all the necessary details. I also mentioned checking surveillance tapes at the mall to gather more information. My wife's face turned a ghostly shade of white, as she realized the severity of her predicament. By this point, my wife was in full panic mode. 
I bombarded her with more and more questions and asked why she wasn't help. I also asked her where her shopping bags were, and she said that she had accidentally left them in her sister's car because she was stressed about the car. I told her to call her sister to have her bring her stuff back to her that she just wouldn't do it, so I kept the pressure on but she would not break. In the end, this worked out in my favor but I was trying my best to crack that confession open. So after hours of drama, and then supposedly waiting for the police to arrive and ask her questions, I just told her that if she wasn't going to actually try to help find the car or assist the police, I was going to have to divorce her. Her jaw dropped, but I was just getting started. She was in disbelief as I called the divorce attorney right there on the spot. I scheduled a consultation and marked the appointment on the calendar in our kitchen. My wife couldn't believe it and started acting as if I was being unreasonable. I played it cool, telling her that I couldn't be with someone who couldn't help protect our assets and that she needed to leave. I added, I'm glad I'm seeing your true colors now, although I would really be angry if you had done something like cheated on me. Oh, that would have been way worse. I'd really be going over the edge if something like that had happened. Her eyes widened with terror. I told her that she needed to pack her things right then and there into leaf. I knew she would go to her sister's house, so I said I would handle the car's situation and send the cops to her sister's house to ask her any questions they needed to ask her. I added a little more salt, saying that she would also be able to get her shopping bags back. Finally. Hell. Terrified and confused, my wife packed her things, the weight of her guilt growing heavier with each item she stuffed into her suitcase. I could hardly contain my excitement, knowing that the final act of my revenge was about to play out. As she walked out the door, I felt a strange sense of calm wash over me. It was as if years of built-up tension were suddenly released, and I knew that I had finally taken back control of my life, but the best part was yet to come. I then went straight to my computer where I uploaded and edited the video footage I had recorded all day long. I even added dramatic music and captions to highlight the most incriminating moments with a wicked grin. I posted it on Facebook, tagging her in the post. I knew that her friends, family, and co-workers would all see the truth, and that her world would finally come crashing down around her. The hours of agony she went through as she slowly realized the truth were incredibly satisfying. I reveled in the revenge I had crafted, feeling absolutely no remorse. As the video spread like wildfire, my phone began to blow up with messages from confused and concerned friends. I said they had reached out to her as well, but that she hadn't responded yet. I could only imagine her humiliation as she struggled with all of the bombardment. I still haven't found out who she was with, but I am still trying, and if and when I do, I am going to destroy his life as well. In the end, my cheating life was left with nothing but her own shattered reputation and a crushing sense of regret. As for me, I emerged from the experience stronger, wiser, and more determined than ever to live my life on my own terms, and that my friends is the story of how I left my cheating wife stranded at the hotel she was cheating at. Sometimes karma has a funny way of working things out, and in this case it was a dish. Best served cold. Remember trust your instincts and never be afraid to stand up for yourself because when the dust settles you might just find that you're better off without those who would deceive you. How well do you think he did is this level of revenge for this type of action, always justified. Let us know your thoughts. In the comments section below, when you subscribe be sure to click the notification bell, click here for more tangled threats.